The true story of a python that loves its human family more than anything shocks the world, but there may be more to it than meets the eye. Hieronymus Carter jolted awake to the shrill ring of his phone. His heart pounded as he fumbled for the device. The clock said it was 3 a.m. Dr. Carter, you must come quickly. The voice was frantic and heavily accented. An enormous python wrapped itself around its family. Hieronymus sat up, fully alert now. The urgency in the caller's voice cut through his sleep-fogged mind. He grabbed a pen and paper and jolted down details as the caller continued. This was no ordinary call. It was a situation that could change everything he knew about these magnificent creatures. Dr. Hieronymus Carter was a distinguished herpetologist from the University of Oxford. He had dedicated his life to studying reptiles, particularly the enigmatic Burmese python. His fascination with these creatures began in his youth and grew into a career marked by extensive field research and numerous publications. Despite his academic accolades, Hieronymus was known for his hands-on approach. He often ventured into remote areas to observe these majestic serpents in their natural habitat. The urgent call from Burma had set him on a journey to a small village near the Irrawaddy River. Nestled amidst lush, dense forests, the village was a tapestry of vibrant greenery and traditional bamboo houses. Munding Aji, the owner of the colossal 16-foot Burmese python, lived in one of these modest bamboo homes. Munding was a simple man. He was a farmer by trade and had an extraordinary relationship with his python, which he affectionately named Naga. The snake was a local legend. It was known for its astonishing size and the surprising bond it shared with his owner and his family. In this rural setting, where ancient traditions and nature coexisted harmoniously, the story of Munding and Naga had become a part of local folklore. Hieronymus arrived in the village to a warm yet curious reception. The villagers were intrigued by the presence of a foreign scientist, especially one who asked so frantically about one of them. They whispered among themselves as he made his way to Mundig's home. The house was a simple structure, raised on stilts to protect against flooding, with chickens pecking in the dirt beneath and children playing nearby. The air was thick with humidity, the scent of earth and vegetation mingled in the breeze. Hieronymus thought he would find a terrifying scene in front of him. He was expecting a massive python, its body deformed by the masses inside of it. Instead, what he found left him shocked. Munding was a man of medium height, with weathered skin and kind eyes that spoke of years of hard work and a deep connection to his land and family. And most importantly, he was very much alive and well. Despite the language barrier, the two men communicated through smiles and gestures, aided by a young local who acted as a translator. The doctor explained that he had been called for an emergency involving a python, but the man shook his head. Yes, the snake had wrapped itself around his family, but none of them had ever been in danger. Perhaps the caller had just been unused to seeing a python interact with people with such affection. Mundig led Hieronymus to a shaded area behind the house where Naga lay coiled. The python's sheer size was awe-inspiring. Its thick body was a mosaic of patterned scales glistening in the filtered sunlight. Hieronymus's scientific mind raced with excitement and curiosity. He had studied pythons extensively, but had never encountered one quite like this. The villagers watched from a respectful distance. For them, Naga was more than just a pet. It was a symbol of nature's raw power. Hieronymus was immediately struck by the tranquility of the scene. Munding's children played near the python without fear. In his mind, this rural setting, steeped in tradition and teeming with life, was the perfect backdrop for the extraordinary story that was about to unfold. He sensed that his research on Burmese pythons was about to enter uncharted territory, with Munding and Naga at the heart of a tale that would challenge his understanding of these remarkable creatures. Munding approached Naga and gently patted the python's head. The massive snake responded by lifting its head slightly and flicking its tongue. Hieronymus watched in awe as Mundig's children joined their father. Their small hands stroked the python scales with a familiarity that spoke of years of interaction. Hieronymus took a tentative step closer. Mundig beckoned him forward. Naga is gentle, the translator relayed. She knows we are her family. Hieronymus knelt beside the python. The scales under his hand were surprisingly smooth and warm from the sun. The python's slow, rhythmic breathing was oddly calming. Munding began to speak. His words flowed through the translator. He recounted how he had found Naga as a young snake years ago and had nursed her back to health after she had been injured. 
From that day forward, Naga had been part of the family. She was not just a pet, but a guardian and a symbol of the family's connection to the land and its creatures. The herpetologist in Hieronymus was fascinated by the behavioral implications of such a bond. Pythons were solitary creatures by nature. They were known for their strength and sometimes unpredictable behavior. Yet, here was Naga exhibiting a level of trust and affection that was truly extraordinary. He made mental notes, eager to delve deeper into the dynamics of this unique relationship. The next morning, Hieronymus was up early. He was eager to witness Mundig feed Naga. He had read about the incredible appetites of Burmese pythons, but the prospect of seeing such a massive creature consume its meal firsthand filled him with a mix of excitement and trepidation. Today, we feed Naga, Mundig said through the translator when Hieronymus arrived. It was like he was describing an everyday chore, and for Mundig, it was. They walked to a nearby enclosure where 50 chickens clucked nervously. Mundig's children helped herd the chickens into a large, makeshift pen. Naga was already awake, her massive body stretched out lazily in the sun. As Munding approached, she lifted her head and her tongue flicked out to taste the air. Even in her most lethargic state, she exuded a quiet power that was both awe-inspiring and intimidating. Munding opened the gate to the pen to allow the chickens to scatter into the larger enclosure. The python's reaction was immediate. Her body tensed and her head lifted higher as she zeroed in on the movement of the chickens. Hieronymus stood back, his notebook ready, eyes wide with fascination. Naga struck with astonishing speed. Her enormous head shot forward, jaws wide open, and within moments she had a chicken in her mouth. The bird struggled briefly before succumbing. Then, Naga began the slow, methodical process of swallowing her prey. Her muscles rippled beneath her scales, and each contraction drew the chicken further into her body. As Naga consumed the chickens one by one, the physicality of the process was mesmerizing. Her jaws expanded to accommodate the size of her prey, and her flexible ligaments and powerful muscles worked in perfect harmony. The sight was both beautiful and brutal, a stark reminder of the raw power inherent in Burmese pythons. Hieronymus scribbled furiously in his notebook. He was struck by the harmony of the scene, the giant python, the calm and affectionate Mundig, and the attentive children. It was a delicate balance of power and tenderness, a relationship built on mutual trust and understanding. As the last chicken disappeared down Naga's gullet, the python coiled back into a relaxed position. Munding gently stroked her head and murmured softly in his native tongue. In the days following the feeding, Hieronymus Carter immersed himself in observing the daily interactions between Munding Aji, his family, and Naga. He noted the seamless integration of the python into the family's routine and marveled at the harmony they seemed to share. However, as the initial wonder began to wear off, a seed of doubt took root in his mind. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the sounds of the jungle intensified, Hieronymus sat on the porch of Munding's home. He watched as Munding and his children prepared for bed. Naga was particularly active. Her massive body moved fluidly around the house. Hieronymus's unease grew as he observed Mundig allowing Naga to coil around him and his children. The python's body, powerful and capable of immense constriction, enveloped them in a seemingly affectionate embrace. Mundig's children giggled as they nestled against the python. They were treating the enormous snake like a living, breathing blanket. Despite his years of studying reptiles, Hieronymus couldn't shake the feeling of discomfort. He knew that pythons were still wild animals with instincts that could be unpredictable. The sight of Naga's coils tightening slightly around Munding's youngest child, a boy no older than five, made his stomach churn. That night, Hieronymus found it difficult to sleep. He had read countless stories of captive pythons turning on their owners, often with tragic results. The thought of something similar happening to Munding's family filled him with dread. He had seen the bond they shared with Naga, but could it truly be safe to let such a powerful creature interact so closely with children? The next morning, Hieronymus approached Munding. I have to admit, I'm concerned about the safety of such close interactions, he said. Munding listened through the translator. He nodded thoughtfully before responding. Naga is part of our family. She's never shown any aggression towards us. Hieronymus appreciated Munding's confidence, but his scientific mind demanded caution. I understand and I see the bond you share, but pythons are still wild animals. Their behavior can be unpredictable. Have you ever considered the risks? Munding's eyes softened. He gestured for Hieronymus to follow him. 
They walked to the shaded area where Naga often rested. The python lay coiled, her body relaxed in the morning sun. Munding knelt beside her. Years ago, when I found Naga, she was injured and frightened. We took care of her and she became part of our family. She has shown us nothing but love and trust. We are careful, always aware of her needs and behaviors, Mundig explained. Hieronymus watched the interaction with lingering doubts. He respected Mundig's experience and the obvious care he took with Naga, but the scientist in him couldn't ignore the potential dangers. He decided to stay a while longer, to observe more closely and to better understand the dynamics of this extraordinary relationship. One evening, as the family settled down for the night, Hieronymus witnessed something that intensified his fears. Naga coiled around Mundig and his children. She seemed to tighten her grip slightly as they drifted off to sleep. The python's immense size and strength were undeniable, and the sight made Hieronymus's heart race. He couldn't shake the image from his mind. While Naga appeared to be gentle and affectionate, the potential for harm was ever-present. The line between pet and predator seemed perilously thin, and Hieronymus couldn't help but worry about what might happen if that line were ever crossed. Hieronymus Carter was awakened by the sounds of morning activity around Munding Aji's home. Today was a significant day for the snake. Naga had shown signs that she was shedding her skin and that the old skin was ready to come off. This was a natural process, but one that required careful handling, especially for such a large serpent. Munding and his family gathered around Naga. She had started to rub her head against rough surfaces, indicating the beginning of her shedding cycle. The python's eyes were cloudy, and her behavior was more sluggish than usual. More signs that the old skin was ready to be discarded. Hieronymus joined them, intrigued to observe this intimate and labor-intensive process. He watched as Munding and his wife, Aie, spoke softly to Naga. Their children stood by, ready to help. Munding explained the process through the translator. We help Naga by gently rubbing and pulling the old skin. It's important to be careful and patient. The family began by lightly spraying Naga with water using a handmade spray bottle. The moisture helped to soften the old skin and made it easier to remove. Munding started at Naga's head where the shedding had already begun. He gently lifted a flap of loose skin and began to peel it back. The process required both strength and delicacy as too much force could harm the new skin underneath. Aie and the children followed suit. Each took a section of the python's body. Hieronymus noted the way Munding's hands moved with confidence and tenderness. His touch was firm yet gentle. The children mirrored their father's actions as their small fingers deftly pulled away the translucent old skin. As the shedding continued, Hieronymus was invited to help. He approached Naga and carefully took a section of the old skin in his hands. The texture was dry and papery, and as he pulled, he was struck by the vibrant new skin revealed beneath. The scales were smooth and glossy, a stark contrast to the dull, worn surface being removed. The process was slow and methodical. It required patience and coordination. The family chatted quietly. For them, this was a routine yet significant part of their relationship with Naga, a demonstration of their commitment and care. After several hours, the task was complete. The ground around them was littered with pieces of the old skin. Naga stretched out with her newly revealed body glistening in the sunlight. The python seemed almost rejuvenated. Her movements were more fluid and her eyes were clear and bright. Munding and his family stepped back to admire their work. Naga slithered closer to Munding and rested her head lightly against his leg. The children gathered around and petted Naga as if she were a cherished member of their family, which, of course, she was. One humid evening, as the jungle around Munding Ajit's home buzzed with the usual nocturnal symphony, an unexpected danger loomed. Hieronymus Carter was sitting on the porch reviewing his notes under the dim light of a lantern when he heard a faint rustling sound that seemed out of place. Inside the house, Munding and his family were preparing for bed. Naga was coiled in her usual spot near the entrance. Suddenly, the sound of breaking glass shattered the tranquility. A group of intruders had broken in. The potential threat to Munding and his family was evident. Hieronymus rushed inside and shouted a warning. Munding, intruders! His voice was sharp with urgency. The family froze for a split second. Munding quickly gathered his children and urged them to stay close. Before anyone could react further, Naga uncoiled and moved with astonishing speed towards the source of the commotion. Her immense body slid across the floor silently. She was a massive force of nature responding to a threat. The intruders saw the giant python heading their way. Naga reared up slightly. 
She raised her head enough to meet the intruder's eye level. Her tongue flicked out to taste the air. The men faltered and their bravado quickly dissolved. The python's behavior was not random aggression. It was a calculated display of guardianship. She hissed, a low menacing sound that sent the intruders scrambling backwards. Realizing they were outmatched, the men fled. Hieronymus's perspective shifted dramatically. He had always respected the family's bond with Naga, but witnessing the python's protective instincts in action was a revelation. This was not merely a pet. Naga was an integral part of the family. Her loyalty and intelligence were undeniable. Munding looked up at Hieronymus. Naga is our guardian, he said simply through the translator. She protects us as we protect her. Hieronymus's mind raced with the implications. He had come to Burma to study a unique relationship between a man and his python. But what he had discovered was far deeper. That night, as the family settled back into an uneasy calm, Hieronymus found himself reflecting on his initial doubts. He had worried about the dangers of such close interactions with a powerful predator. But now he saw the other side of the coin. Naga's protective behavior demonstrated a level of intelligence and empathy that defied conventional understanding. The incident with the intruders had proven one thing beyond a doubt. Naga loved her family fiercely. As the weeks turned into months, Hieronymus Carter continued his research. Each day brought new insights into the extraordinary bond they shared. He observed how Naga seemed to respond to the family's emotions, offering comfort when the children were upset and showing excitement when they played around her. This was not the behavior of a mere pet, but of a sentient being deeply connected to her human family. In his notes, Hieronymus wrote, Naga's bond with Mundig and his family is not just extraordinary, it's a rare example of cross-species affection and intelligence. She understands them, responds to their needs, and provides protection and comfort. This level of emotional connection is unprecedented in my studies of reptiles. It is clear to me now that Naga truly loves Mundig Aji and his family more than anything. Years later, Hieronymus would still recall his time in Burma with a sense of wonder. The bond he had witnessed was a powerful reminder of the beauty and complexity of the natural world. Munding Aji and his family continued to live their lives. Their days were intertwined with Naga's and continued to showcase a heartwarming and enduring connection. In the end, the story of Munding, his family and Naga was not just about a remarkable python. It was a story about love, trust and the incredible potential for understanding and empathy between all living beings. Do you have a story about a remarkable relationship between a human and a snake? Tell us about it in the comments, we'd love to hear. For now though, we're out of here. We'll catch you in the next video.